Hi, I'm Gideon, and today we're talking DNS. DNS is the internet service that changes the name you type into a browser or the URL of the website you're connecting to, to a proper IP address. The internet only works on IP addresses when it routes traffic around the internet. So how does it work that we can actually change these names to IP addresses? Well, DNS is the way. So DNS is a lookup service. And when we type in a, IP, a, a URL like www.google.com, somewhere we have to be able to connect to a DNS server to be able to resolve that name. So let's understand how that works. Well, on the internet, there are two different types of DNS, uh, or two important levels of DNS. There's the root DNS service. The root DNS service is managed by an organization that actually defines all the top level domain servers. So every single DNS server knows what the root DNS servers are. And these root DNS servers know where the DNS servers are for the top level domain servers. There are a number of top level domains. When the internet was created, .com, .gov, .net, .org, these were all uh, top level domains which were created right in the start of the internet. Nowadays, each country typically has a top-level domain. Uh, I'm in South Africa, so our top-level domain is .com. Uh, um, sorry, .za. Um, under .za, or under every top-level domain server, there are subdomains. Well, typically. So, in a .com world, Google.com is a subdomain, or Google, Google is a subdomain of .com. So, Google.com is a subdomain of .com. CO.za is a subdomain of .za. So at the subdomain level, there are countries, there are organizations, there are even organizations who have top level, their own top level domain servers. So when we look at this picture over here, we actually read the picture from the bottom up. Right at the bottom of each branch of the tree is actually the server or the individual URL or the server you're going to connect to, www.google.com. So www is a server address. Everything above the very bottom layer is actually a DNS server. So there's DNS servers for google.com, there's DNS servers for Wikipedia, Behance, co.za. In the co.za domain, there's actually a DNS servers for property, property.co.za. And on the property DNS server, we've actually got the host www.property.co.za. As on the Google DNS server, google.com DNS server, we would have um, a www address, which is the actual host or the IP address of where the Google website is. So that's how DNS is put together. It's a tree. It's a tree that's read from the bottom up, right at the bottom of the hosts, everything above that are DNS servers. So does DNS only do hostname lookup? Well, let's have a look at the different types of services that DNS offers, or different types of addresses that we can define in DNS. Typically, a record in DNS refers to an address record. That's typically a server name, uh, www.google.com. We can also have canonical names, which are sort of alias names for other DNS records. MX records are all about who are the mail exchanges or the mail servers for a certain domain. So for instance, google.com, if we do an MX lookup on google.com, we'll find out where to send mail if we want to send something to gmail.com. We'll ask uh, the uh, DNS, what is the MX record for gmail.com? Uh, name servers is the way we figure out what are the name servers for the domain. Uh, PDR records are actually quite interesting. They are the reverse of DNS. In DNS, we change a name to an IP address. A PDR record is about changing an IP address to a name. So these are typically managed by the ISP who have the IP addresses assigned. And DNS can then be asked, um, for this IP address, what's the name of the server? These virtual hosted servers uh, are typically managed by the virtual provider, their pointer records. The start of authority record is all about what is the IP address of the server or the DNS server, where um, which is the start of authority? In other words, the primary DNS server for a domain. Service location records um, or DNS records are all are used quite often in things like Active Directory, 
we want to find a service like where is the Kerberos server or where is the LDAP server uh, within a certain AD domain. So DNS is not only internet, you can have private DNS as well. So you can take all this technology, deploy it privately in the organization for internal IP addresses. And typically that what, that's what Microsoft does when you deploy an Active Directory domain within your organization. It doesn't have to point to the internet, it doesn't use DNS on the internet, it actually uses a private implementation of DNS. And SRV records are used quite a lot within Active Directory. Text records are often used for SPF, uh, a sender policy uh, framework, I think it is. Um, that's for um, mail. So if a, a mail server receives a mail on the internet from somewhere, um, it does a DNS lookup, looks for a TXT record, a specific one, and one the SPF record. And when it finds the SPF record, it says, oh, is this machine sending me the email uh, permitted to send email on behalf of that domain? So that's what uh, TXT records. You can also put other things in TXT records. You can, um, <clears throat> in TXT records, you can put in a message a text message, this is a cool domain or whatever, you can store anything inside TXT records that is typically available um, for to, to save whatever you like. Um, but as I say, they're normally used for SPF, Center Policy Framework. Um, that's really all DNS is all about. It is a tree, they DNS servers, DNS servers know about hosts, and hosts are typically at the bottom of the tree. And the hosts are defined on the DNS server for the domain to which they belong. Uh, the commercial viability of this, um, .com, .co.za, every domain, you'll pay a few rand uh, or, or a few dollars each year to a provider uh, who actually hosts that record for you of where your DNS server. If you own a domain, um, you're in charge of the SOA record of that domain. And then that means that you can create all types of records. You can create your own A records, your own um, MX records, your own pointer records. Um, well, pointer is actually on IP address layer. Uh, but MX records, A records, text records, and SRV records. You can, you, you're then in charge, or then you're able to create all those type of records. In essence, DNS is very simple. On your phone, you type in www.google.com, a DNS lookup happens and that dns lookup actually goes to the google dns server if it's not cached anywhere then uh, it returns an ip address and then your browser will connect to that ip address um, and route traffic to that ip address to get the web page so every page lookup every email everyone uses dns we're going to do a couple more um, um, videos around DNS. I'm going to show you a little bit about how, how to fault find things. And if you're a system administrator and you ever see somebody type in a server name in somewhere where you want to find a server by name, and they just use the server name, server one dot nothing, be worried. People must use DNS. DNS is always server name dot domain, subdomain, domain, domain. So you always have server name dot something. We call that the fully qualified domain name, and that is the way that we should address servers. It's the way DNS was built, and it's the way that we should use DNS. So thank you for watching. Please click the subscribe button and watch some of the other DNS videos. Thank you.